Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, another video. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, Mike Farr, welcome to the video. Today we have a little bit different type of topic, kind of what's happening in the news right now, um, what's going on in the world. Uh, it's very touchy type subject. And so what I'm going to ask for you guys is I brought this conversation up uh, to my Twitch community the other day and we had a very healthy open conversation. And now what we like to say around here is you do you, me do me. And what I mean by that is you can do whatever you'd like as long as it doesn't bring any kind of harm, uh, influence, happiness, or someone else's life or lifestyle. And me do me, allow me to be who I am and do what I do in my life as it does not impact you, but some things in life, obviously, rules, gestures, actions can impact others. And so I'd like for all of us to be as respectful as we can. And again, we had a great talk on my Twitch. And so let's try to continue that here. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to have a healthy conversation on this in the chat or the comments below. But um, be as respectful as you can. You're, you're more, more than right to your own opinion. Um, I guess let's start to dig into this thing. Give this thing a thumbs up if you guys enjoy this type of conversation. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more content every Monday and Thursday. Now, uh, more, more recently, the USAPL, United States uh, Association of Powerlifting, one of the most common, if not most popular, drug tested powerlifting associations in America, which leads to the IPF, which is arguably the most notable and respected world competition in the sport of powerlifting, um, basically came out and said that they're following and accepting the medical and rules set by the IPF um, medical committee that transgender people are not allowed to compete in their uh, competitions if they have began to transition. Um, if there's no transition, I believe that they're allowed to compete in their biological um, category. Now, before we dig into this, again, we're gonna have conversations. This isn't a presentation. Um, I've done a good amount of research on this topic for this current video and also in the past, uh, interviewing Janae Kroc, a uh, world record power lifter, um, very competitive, strong man, a bodybuilder, and I never wanna offend anybody, so if I misspeak, please forgive me. I'm just maybe not as caught up on the terms, and I mean no offense to anyone. I'd like to also state two other things before we dig into the topics. One, I believe that everyone should be allowed to participate in the sport of powerlifting. Uh, powerlifting is something that I believe can really change and shape a human being's confidence, uh, work ethic, discipline, and if they allow and they're open and self-aware enough, will really bleed into the rest of their lives to allow them to succeed, whether it's relationships, communication, business, anything they want because of the work ethic, because of the monotonous grind that is powerlifting, because of the the ever balanced steel that never changes in you it's you against that metal every day, every rep, every set for years upon years. And once you really dig into this sport, I've been in it for about 10 years now, um, you really start to learn different things. And again, if you're self-aware, I believe it can really build you as a human being. The other thing I'd like to say uh, before we dive in is I did a good amount of research on the topic itself, the USAPL's articles or statement. Uh, a bunch of my peers and other lifters, influencers, um, articles, statements, a couple articles that are just maybe uh, floating around the internet. And what I'm gonna try to do here is just open up conversation and bring up questions that I think need to be answered or perhaps studied or uh, have some science behind before we give an definitive answer. And now there has to be a rule made, right? Because these situations are occurring. Um, but basically what I'm trying to do here is just bring up conversation. So if I look like I'm jumping on either side of the topic, it's because I don't just follow because I rightfully believe something. Um, I do have my own beliefs, but what I'm trying to do again is bring up conversation and I'm going to try to almost play devil's advocate a little bit on either side with any kind of questions that pop into me. Uh, I, I may not be the smartest guy in the world, uh, but I think I'm fairly logical and I can pinpoint what I believe needs to actually be answered and maybe different metaphors here and there that may or may not make sense to you, but they've worked in my head, so I'm gonna try to bring some of those up. Um, but basically, dig digging into the article, the USA Parallel Lifting is an inclusive organization for all athletes and members who comply with the rules, policies, procedures, and bylaws. USA Powerlifting is not fit for every athlete and every medical condition or situation. Simply, not all powerlifters are eligible to compete in the USA Powerlifting. And what they mean by that, uh, you know, starting off is they're obviously going to top into the 
hop on the transgender, but they also, they're drug tested, right? So if you um, are on TRT or you take any kind of PED on your own, you know, they're saying you're not allowed to lift here, basically. They go on to further say that a trans male, uh, someone who's biologically born a female, um, will have testosterone therapy if they are going through the transformation um, that that is not legal by them because again exogenous uh, androgens and hormones are not allowed in the USAPL and then vice versa they say that a trans uh, woman uh, born uh, biological male uh, is not allowed to compete because of advantages that a male develops significant advantages including but not limited to increased body and muscle mass bone density bone structure and connective tissue the studies or science that I've seen um, I've actually never seen real science or studies done on this some of them are just articles I've read and people quote science but I've actually never seen this done and maybe because it's too new or maybe it's just too hard to control all the variables but basically a trans woman a born biological male who chooses to transition has too many advantages um, with again what the USAPL is saying and the counter argument is that with a year of estrogen and hormone therapy that those advantages disappear um, and from my logical sense I would really need a, a full study to do to actually agree and say that I think that there's so many things with bone structure bone density tendons and ligaments let alone the overall amount of muscle mass that a male is born with. Typically, we don't really lose muscle mass, uh, whether you are detrained or perhaps go through estrogen therapy. Uh, typically, what we do is our muscles may shrink and uh, we may need more stimulus or the potential for them to grow or be stronger may diminish slightly with some of these therapies. But again, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone structure, um, how our hips are set, how our shoulders are set um, as males, tend to give us an advantage to be more powerful um, and in some explosive movements. Not all, obviously, these are all blanket statements, but typically speaking, um, these things cannot be changed. And so with the transition, it, it, it will take away some of the androgens, right? Some of the testosterone may disappear. So some of the stimulus, um, we may not adapt as quick or recover as quick uh, or have the potential to grow as much muscle or be as ex explosive. But I think these other factors, obviously it may depend on when the transition occurs. Uh, if you transition much younger in life, uh, opposed to much later, the development of a human, but typically the development of a man happens through puberty, obviously our teens. And that's when we um, not only gain most of our muscle mass, most of our testosterone, but again, our bone structure ligaments tendons are all strengthened uh, and more so genetic again if we could run a study or get some real research done that proves what length and what type of hormone therapy may equalize any biological advantages from male to female then I think we can have a more in-depth discussion of uh, perhaps a transgender going through transition and how they can compete in this uh, sport that is powerlifting. Again, you know, I think another thing we might have to dig up, and this may not go well with everybody, is 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 the rule blanket statement for every sport. Um, there probably are different advantages or disadvantages depending on biological uh, circumstances based on the sport, right? Uh, I've talked about this a lot in the past in terms of PEDs and also muscle fiber types, just talking uh, anecdotal in my own survey uh, type research um, that the numbers in marathons from male to female is very, very close if you take the world records or if you look at the elite or if you look at the best squat ever done by a male, uh, let's just keep it in the USAPL and we have have Ray Williams with I think 1,052 and you take a female it's more like 600 so nearly double the squat um, which is quite a, a, a big margin um, which you may argue is physical advantage and you could go to body weight saying Ray Williams is larger and heavier than perhaps the female that squatted 600 which also I think is just another biological advantage that a male may be able to carry or gain more mass whether it be muscle or just general mass uh, which can uh, be an advantage in powerlifting. Where if you're looking at, you know, UFC, you might look at basketball, WNBA to the NBA. Obviously, there tend to be a little bit taller males, right? The average NBA player might be around 6'6", six, six, and the average um, WNBA player may be 5'9". I'm not sure of that, but uh, it's something to that nature. So we may have to take this sport by sport basis. Uh, keep reading a couple articles um, to oppose this ruling by the USAPL, um, someone was bringing up that uh, there has not been a dominant uh, trans 
woman in any sport that they could think of. Uh, they brought up uh, a certain amount of uh, names that I wasn't familiar with, and then they mentioned Fallon Fox, and they mentioned that she wasn't dominant, um, but I believe she is. her record is 5-1, and one, and dominant is kind of a blanket statement. What does that necessarily mean? I think 5-1 and one is a pretty dang good record. I don't believe she's competed in the UFC, and that might be a ruling again um, by the UFC, so for her not to be able to fight the best in the world isn't necessarily her option to know if she's dominant or not. And again, I do think it depends uh, sport by sport, but my argument or conversation opener for something like that, when someone brings up an article um, that says that it's equal playing field if um, a trans woman has transitioned and gone through hormone therapy, my argument is just that we don't know because of the pool of um, talent that is involved in this, you know, uh, observational research or, or this survey that we see or this anecdotal evidence that these people aren't dominant. Um, now here's the metaphor I go to and it may not work with some of you but it worked in my head. Um, so basically what happens is whatever sport these people are playing as a biological or competing in biologically may not even be the best sport for them and so when they transition they may not be any better. Hypothetically speaking, let's take me um, and let's say biologically, right, I'm a male. Uh, I was pretty good at basketball. I had some looks to play in college. I played a little bit of junior college and I played against uh, some NBA players, some ex-NBA European, um, and even some WNBA players. So let's hypothetically say that I transitioned to a female. I went through all um, the hormone therapy. Now, even if I think that I lost a certain amount on my vertical jump, a certain amount on my um, sprint speed, my power, etc., which is kind of what they're uh, saying in this article I read because of the hormone therapy that it levels the playing field in terms of those natures, I still think that I could have a shot at playing in the WNBA. Um, if we do that same procedure to me and I lose some of my um, explosiveness or, or physical attributes, whatever it may be, I have no chance to do something on the competitive level of long distance running. I'm just not a good long distance runner. And so uh, my point being that we don't have a pool of talent to survey enough or to have enough evidence either way. Um, just because Fallon Fox is or is not dominant, again, dominance just a blanket word, in MMA, maybe she's just uh, not that good of a fighter. Uh, maybe it has nothing to do with the transition itself, which is just so common because what we're doing oftentimes when we, when this this article was talking about people being dominant in different sports they're looking at the very elite level and that's my you know I know I'm bouncing back inside on what argument I'm making I'm not making an argument I'm just pointing up points um, is that powerlifting I believe again everybody should be able to participate should everybody be able to compete at the highest level um, or win money or win trophies or titles I don't know I think that's where the gray line is for at least me in my opinion but I do believe that everyone should have the option to participate on the platform as it is them versus the iron. It is them versus the poundage that they're trying to lift. It is very different than every other sport. Obviously a combat sport brings up different things. Um, any kind of physical sport, football, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a lot of people in my Twitch chat were bring up the argument that there's an NFL and obviously a female, a biological female has not played in the NFL and that is because males have such a physical advantage in that type of uh, contact sport. And so whether um, one way or the other, uh, trans male, trans female, uh, compete in the NFL. It, one, obviously there's just genetics involved in general, whether you're good enough to play at the highest level. And then two, um, the other one is the trans male argument is if you're born a biological female and now you're taking loads of testosterone, how do we know exactly how much that testosterone is benefiting you or not benefiting you if it's going to supernatural levels? Um, again, PEDs, uh, you know, is something we do have to look at. I believe that there is um, a lot of argument to be made that if someone takes a lot of testosterone or uh, different steroids that they will have an advantage in sports. So whether they have an advantage beyond what a biological male would have, that uh, is up to the scientists and not little Mike. Because of the nature of the topic and the sensitivity of the topic, I just do think that maybe, I do think that powerlifting is the sport that should lead the way in this in this venture that to allow anybody to participate. Again, I don't know if money, uh, trophies, world titles should be involved, but I do believe that everyone has the right to participate. Uh, other sports, it does get a little bit more uh, hairy in my opinion because of the physical nature of some sports and um, because of the, the money on the line. There's a large career in a lot of other sports. So how and when we fit that in, I'm not sure because again, I believe the pool is too small. The biggest factors that I see are the issue, right? The pool of um, athletes is too small to say 
say whether there's advantage or not just by surveying. Uh, again, this one article, the main article I see floating around, the guy talks about not having dominant athlete, trans athletes, but the pool is too small to argue that and the, the, the amount of sports and variety of sports is too small to to, to actually um, say that, in my opinion. And the other one is the science. We don't know the advantages or disadvantages um, for a trans male who takes a bunch of testosterone, biological female, or a trans uh, woman who takes a bunch of hormone therapy, estrogen in particular, um, to take away some of the maybe biological advantages that a male may have. I think we can all agree that a biological male does have some advantages and even more advantages depending on the sport or activity. Uh, and so I think these things do need to be addressed. Now, I don't think it's an argument of what is fair and not fair. Um, I think it's just an argument of how to go about this right. And as everything that comes uh, to light in life over history, it does take time. And so I don't know if the USAPL is necessarily making the right statement here by saying that they can't even participate. Um, I understand, and I use the word participate because I, again, I want people to step on the platform. I want people to have goals. I want people to continue to strive to be better in the gym and allow that work ethic discipline and self-awareness to bleed into other aspects of their life as a huge teaching tool. Um, that's why I'm not saying the word compete. And I don't know about the competitive activities and whether that's uh, a different topic or not, or maybe that's just how my head works. And I think that's a good stepping stool to where we may go once we understand um, and survey the, a larger pool or get some actual science done. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys for listening to me ramble a little bit. I just want to get my thoughts out on it. And I know a lot of you are interested in this topic. Um, I do love the sport of strength and conditioning. I love the barbell. I love powerlifting. I love the community out there in the fitness community. And I think that it's better that we can be as inclusive as we can in the participation of uh, competitive powerlifting because it really does teach you a lot about yourself to sign up, get in that ugly singlet and hop onto uh, the barbell in front of uh, a couple people because it is, it is very telling. Uh, it's, a big, it's a big courage step. And I think that everybody should go through it if they want and, and have the choice to go through it. So um, there's my thoughts on it. Please, please, please do your best to be kind. Give your opinion. Let me know thoughts, maybe different points that I missed that you think. I'll be in the comments commenting uh, and, and having hopefully a conversation with you guys. I just want to bring up these points again. This is not a presentation. This is just my thoughts uh, after reading a bunch of it all week long. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, be sure to give this a thumbs up. Also comment below what you want me to cover in upcoming videos. I'm open. Uh, I've been in this this game a very long time, and so a lot of these things are, are near and dear to my heart. So uh, I appreciate you guys. I hope you have a great day. Catch you in the next one. New videos Monday and Thursday. You can catch me every day on Twitch. Silent Mike on Twitch. And also 50% Facts. New podcast every Wednesday. Have a good one, y'all.